Hey guys, welcome to Need It Make It, I'm Mike. So don't get me wrong, I love 3D printing. I like to design whatever it is that I need and just make it myself. But there is one thing about 3D printing that I'd really like to change, and that is the look and the feel of my 3D prints. They just kind of seem as though they're throwaway junk. So in this video, I'm gonna be attempting to change all of that by using 3D printing for what it is best at and utilizing traditional manufacturing techniques to achieve the ultimate high quality solution that hopefully is gonna look great function perfectly and should also stand the test of time. So stick around. What exactly makes a high quality product? The material or our perception of that material that it has value, the weight of it, the consistency of the surface, including the sheen, the design details, all of these little things together make something special. There is also that feel that's something tactile that's a little bit hard to explain. I have to admit, it kind of hurts me a little bit inside every time I make something that has no purpose for these videos. So in this video, I'd like to take this wireless Rode mic and make it into a high quality and useful handheld mic for our tests. These mics make a huge difference for me and they're also made in Australia, which is pretty nice. So first off, I've modeled the mic as accurately as possible. I like to model with a lot of detail. For example, this one has a mag clip on it and I wanna make sure that it works with the mag clip and without it as well. This is the exact size model, but to make sure that we have a good clearance, I've copied the model and I've scaled it up a little bit. That way we have some tolerance to make sure it isn't too tight. This is a sketch of what I kind of like to end up with in the final product. I'm using 3D printing where it really shines to create a complex head that has a smooth flowing shape. It's gonna have a mortise to accept a tenon as well. And I've also given it this kind of rectangular flowing into an elliptical shape. That way it doesn't roll off of a desk or a tabletop. I wanna make sure that it can be used as is with the mic just coming out of the top, or we can add a windbreak as well for that more traditional look. So I've subtracted the scaled up mic from the head and I've also added a cutout so that we can charge it as well when it's mounted. And I've added some little chamfers and fillets here and there just to give it a finished look. With the model finished and it's looking pretty nice, we need to find a way to make the prints look like they're professionally made. So for that, we're gonna need a few things. We're gonna need a printer capable of printing with extremely tight tolerances. So I'm gonna be using both my Bamboo Lab X1 Carbon and I'm gonna be using my Creality K1. And it just so happens both these printers are pretty fast too, which is really nice to get these parts knocked out. To go with that, we're also gonna need some high quality filament. So I have this Prusament PET-G, which is very consistent and it's gonna to help to hide those layer lines. Unfortunately, PET-G is a little bit shiny for my taste. So I'm gonna use a little trick that a viewer suggested and that is to use fuzzy skin with only a very light fuzz added, only 0.03 in both the depth and in the spacing as well. And we're also gonna make sure that we have the seam lined up vertically. Apparently, if we do this properly, it can look like an injection molded part. I'm also going to print this heavy duty with six walls and 25% gyroid infill. That's going to help us to achieve that high quality, heavy feel. Just so you're aware, if you've tried to use Prusament PET-G or maybe Prusament in general on your AMS system for your bamboo printer, you may not notice that the spools themselves arrive warped. And that causes a problem because the outside of the spool is flared out. It's quite a bit wider out here and it's a little bit inconsistent around the perimeter. When you try to put it into the AMS system, it will bind up and it just does not work. The only way I was able to get this to work properly in the AMS is by using some of the material. So in here I have some black Prusament PET-G and you can see how much of the spool I've used up and I was able to load this in and it does not bind anymore. But trying to load in a full spool does not work. Unfortunately, the only solution I can think of to that is to re-spool this entirely. And it's a bit of a shame because it is so nice and consistent. Okay, so let's get those prints going. I've also printed a model using bamboo PLA carbon fiber and I didn't use the fuzzy skin feature at all. And it also has a nice pro look to it as well. So now how does the mic actually fit into it? I also wanted the logo to stand out a little bit more. So I tested out using some modifiers in the slicer to have the logo printed without the fuzz on it, but that ended up not working so well. So I settled on fuzzy skin on all walls. 
The seam being lined up isn't really ideal, so we can increase the fuzziness to 0.15 in depth and in spacing, and then set the seam to random instead, and that should hide it pretty well. Here's a model that I printed with 0.1, and it's just about enough to conceal the seams. I haven't calibrated this filament yet for this printer, so it is possible to get better results than this. So now it is time to pick the material for the handle. I have this lilac, which is from my own property. It's extremely hard, it's very light in color, it looks similar to ash, and it should give a nice modern look. I have cherry as well, which is rich and warm with pretty grain. Pretty wood. It also smells amazing when it's being cut. Cherry can also be left out in the sun for a day, and it will darken naturally. And I really wanted something that gives a rich, dark look to it with lots of depth, so I have this walnut also. I've prepped all the blanks, and I'm really lucky because the rough sawn cherry and walnut are about 29 millimeters thick, and I need the handles to be 27 millimeters thick at their largest diameter. So let's get some handles turned. I'll get this mounted, and then we can do the rough turning. First, I'm looking to get a perfect cylinder. And for the handle, I'm looking for a very slight taper. So from 27 millimeters where the shoulder meets the head to 24 millimeters at the bottom of the handle. Next, I'll mark out the length of the tenon, and then using my parting tool, I'll make a shoulder for the tenon, making the tenon just a little bit shorter than I need it to prevent it from bottoming out in the hole. I need a 19.7 millimeter diameter tenon to fit in a 20 millimeter hole. This is looking good, and it's time to go through the grits now and get this to a point where we can put the finish on. I'm starting at 100 grit, and normally I would not recommend using a vacuum like this, but the fine dust is just terrible for my equipment, so I'm just trying to be careful doing this. I've sanded it all the way up to 320 grit, and then I'll take some of the wood chips and burnish the surface of the wood to smooth it even more. Now we can apply the finish, and I'm using an oil-based polyurethane. It dries really quick, adds that richness, depth, and provides great protection. I'll add three coats of poly and then I can cut off the end and sand it flush to remove the piece driven by the spur center and then apply poly to that area as well. A handle that is solidly connected to the head is going to help achieve that quality feel and to do that I'm going to be using PL Premium Polyurethane Adhesive. I only need a little bit and I've also ribbed the inside of the printed part just to give the glue a place to go since this adhesive also likes to expand as it cures. I've let the glue set overnight, so now these are finished, and let's go ahead and try this out. So now the question is, are these high quality? This one here with the orange filament, 
does not look as good to me. It looks more like a toy. And for that reason, I don't think I would go with this one. I thought with the lighter colored handle that it would look a little bit more modern, and, and it does. But I think this color really does not show off the quality, even though it's pretty solid, it feels good. This one, on the other hand, I actually think it looks really good. And I think the wood, the cherry wood here, really complements the light blue. Um, but again, it's preference. So I like this one. I also really like this black. This looks really good. And this one as well was printed with carbon fiber. And because the carbon fiber has that already matte finish and slightly textured surface, it really does look like a part that you get professionally made. Nothing feels hollow. It sounds good. I also printed a version in Galaxy Black and it also has that slightly textured surface. And I think this one looks pretty good too. By the way, if you want to 3D print your own, I have both this model and a fully 3D printable model, which has the handle printed separately, available on my Patreon page as well, free to my patrons as usual. Normally, the shininess of the PETG looks pretty awful, especially because you can see any little defect. And I think this textured surface does a pretty good job of concealing any of that. So is this something you consider doing yourself or do you have other techniques that you like to use? Let me know in the comments. So all that's left to do now is give this a try. This is Mike reporting from Nimi News, thanking all of my patrons for helping to support this channel and making videos like this possible. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, make sure to subscribe and like this video as well if you enjoyed it and found it helpful. And take care, everybody, and we will see you on the next one. And take care, everybody, we will see you on the next one.